Hello, everyone. Your old friend Garrett coming to you from the Music Zoo today with my friend Jordan, longtime collaborator and partner in crime. What's up? And today we are here to talk to you about something very exciting. Not only a new guitar, but a new guitar company, The Powers Electric. Use your government name. That's how you know it's official. It's serious business today, guys. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you ain't done so already. <laughs> so here it is, the Powers Electric A-Type. A-Type is the model name. Powers Electric is named by Andy Powers, most famously the chief guitar designer and CEO of Taylor Guitars. But this is its own company, uh, electric guitar design from the ground up by Andy. But I think this is not the first time you've seen this guitar. No, is we, it? yeah, we've been presented with a couple of different prototypes over the last couple of years. The first time that we had seen something along this lines, it was very top secret uh, in a secret meeting place during the Summer NAM show in 2021. Me and Tim were shown early sort of prototype designs, but it was really focused around the pickups that are in this guitar. And at this moment, it has evolved into two different iterations, the double F42, which that F F stands for full Faraday cage, mm -hmm. and the PF42, which stands for partial Faraday cage, and that pickup is a little bit higher output, a little more kind of aggressive, I guess you could say. Um, the pickup design is very interesting. It blends a lot of old, kind of like late 40s, pre-war technology. There's a lot of kind of like Andy Powers wizardry in here. He showed us some different <laughs> sort of like magnetic materials yeah. and things when we visited his workshop. It uses a 42 gauge magnet wire in it. It's a full Faraday cage, which means that it's very quiet. Um, you know, a lot of these terms are things that I'm not really super familiar with, but Andy has a little bit of a mad scientist streak in him where he's super good with this kind of stuff. And it's really yielded a great sounding pickup, very musical. And I feel like that's the heart of this instrument. Yeah, I feel like we're the silly guitar players who so were like, two thumbs up, it sounds good. We're like, and he's yeah, like, cool. <laughs> I did all this crazy stuff, like you don't understand, like he was, we did that trick at the at the, the shop where it was like throwing the magnet right. down the pipe and it was yes. floating down to show an aluminum how, tomb, yeah. to show how strong the the field of electromagneticism was, was yeah. in this thing. But I think the way you can like totally describe these pickups, it's like single coils with a little bit more muscle to them. Yeah. P90s with a, even more definition. Yes, I think very much. P90 they're super to me. focused. I was playing this through a high gain amp just before we started the video, and it was so tight, yep. and noiseless, which yeah. was really the most important part. There was very little amp hum coming off these pickups. Yeah, and another key feature of it as well is that there are a proprietary set of potentiometer values for both the volume and the tone, uh, and the way that they interact with the pickups the amp, any pedals in your signal chain is really beautiful. I think a key design element in a lot of things in guitar is also the usable range of controls, right? True. You can have a really wide range, but maybe only the usable bandwidth is very narrow in that, and what do you really need that additional range? And I think that he did a fabulous job of tuning these controls to these great sounding pickups where there's honestly not a bad sound in this guitar. Yeah, Electric. I mean, going off the pickups though, it's not just the pickups that sound amazing. I think the whole, construction of the body and the neck and all these other features are something we should start talking about. That is very true. That yeah, contribute to the, the overall sound. Yep. Actually, before we get into the construction, I kind of want to talk about the aesthetics of guitar and our humble opinions on them. I think my humble opinion is that it gets an A+. Uh, it's a familiar, contemporary, yet kind of retro design. Slightly offset, you can see the waist right there. Here's the top, and here's the bottom. It's a little more diagonal, but it's not as like obviously offset as like a jazz master or a Mustang or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, what else do we got? A nice bevel on the top so when you're holding it, your forearm gets kind of tucked in there. Mm. Headstock shape, nailed it. Most you, important part. What do you think? Yeah, it definitely looks great and I think that is one of the hardest things to come up with when you're looking at designing a guitar for sure. Yeah, Andy Powers grew up in Southern California and you know we're all products of our environment. He kind of modeled this guitar after classic cars um, surfboards, surfing, the right. ocean. You kind of see a lot of those design elements in there. I mean, if I design a guitar, it'd probably look like a 
slice of pizza or a bagel, <laughs> you'd probably make it look like Taylor Ham. Yep. Something like that. That's right. It's called Taylor Ham, not pork roll. <laughs> That's right. North Jersey? North Jersey. There you go. Represent. God's country. <laughs> Uh, what else did we go from there? Let's talk about the tone lids a little bit, perhaps? Yeah, and the construction of the guitar, despite the solid finish on this one and lack of F-holes, so to speak, it is actually a completely hollow construction. The back is urban ash, the top is maple, and on the A-type select, it's actually figured maple with a transparent finish, so you can see that a little more clearly. The hollow design is modified with a sort of special kind of trussle bracing that he developed for that hollow guitar. And in addition to that, it has two sound posts that the bridge mounts into. The way that he designed it, instead of something that's sort of like a, a pressed in insert, as you've seen in a lot of previous guitar design, they're actually threaded into the wood. So you get a lot better uh, transference of the resonance as well. And he was also talking about the way that a pressed in insert will start to split fibers and affect the kind of tonal transfer or resonant transfer of the bridge to the wood and stuff like that. I got a picture on my phone, we'll throw it in right here. Yeah, totally, and that's all that <laughs> science stuff I was alluding to earlier that's above my pay grade anyway. Um, but that hollow body response is certainly there. When you play it, you get that harmonic content. Yeah, I think when you, when you strum it, you feel like the sonic like transference, yes. like all vibrating yep. together. It's just like hollow body on steroids. Everything is Absolutely. going at the same time. Actually. That actually contributes, I remember, to the lack of feedback. It's yeah. a hollow body guitar, if you're playing it through a high gain amp. Yep. Very little feedback. You get it when you want it, yep. which I tried to do, but it's very controllable. Yeah, totally. And yeah. it really is a nice lightweight instrument because of that hollow construction. Oh yeah, for sure. It balances beautifully either on the lap or on a strap. That's a nice rhyme. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm on fire today. <laughs> Let's talk about this tailpiece. Yes. Very special. Yep. I believe this is called the camshaft. The cam, cam tail. The cam tail. Yep. Right? And so it looks like a couple other familiar vibrato systems. Yeah, that we've seen. There's some very special designs in here designed to make it act more like a lap steel. Right. Or a pedal steel because when you're bending, all the strings pitch go down in unison. Which right. is really nice. And that's thanks to this right here. This little, give me the science here. Right. This sort of... The uh, tailpiece itself has this camshaft on it, and as you can see, there's sort of different layers or levels of notches for each string, and he essentially tuned that for the balance of the diameter of the string and the tension that the string is under. Yeah, like look how much here you can right. see. How much higher, how the, much high higher the high yep. E string sits and everything else, so that when you're bending. Right, it bends in tune with itself. Yeah, yeah. and right here's a nice little point. We'll zoom in, that little pin. Yep. That gives us a zero point. So it's yes. always returning to zero. Exactly. When it's in the just sort of down only mode, you can also remove that pin. There's a little thing right you, here. Yep, exactly. Just unscrew that and that gives you sort of vibrato in both directions. You have the up bend as well. It moves really smoothly. The other thing is that this arm is designed to be able to be adjusted to stay in place or floating, depending on how much of that you want as well. It's been really holding really well. We've had this for a couple of days. We're yeah, all playing we've been it, wrenching our, on it. Yep. Yeah. Not going anywhere. Absolutely. That's awesome, because this drives me nuts when they just... Yeah. Flop. Yeah. I hate that. Same. Killed it. So as I, we were mentioning earlier, pretty much every element of this guitar, other than the tuners and the strings, was like purposefully designed for this. It's all proprietary. One of the really cool features that was shown to us is the bridge design itself. So as you can see, it's a metal bridge that sort of mounts to the two posts, and it's actually acting sort of like a leaf spring was the way that Andy described it to us. It's actually got some tension to it when it's mounted so that it really assists with the transference of the resonance of the instrument as well. As you can see, this one has a one-piece ebony saddle on there to give you that nice sort of acoustic, beautiful like transference of tone and like a more warm, woody tone and level of sustain. Yeah. It is adjustable for intonation, as you can see there, with the two cap screws as well. I see that, that's a nice touch. It matches the pickup rings. It does, yeah. All right, so by now we've hit you with enough tech specs and science. You just wanna know what the neck feels like, right? I'm gonna tell you, asymmetrical C. So how Andy describes it is just like a slim, perfect feeling, but that's not really how I can convey this through YouTube. So on the bass side of the neck, it's got a little more shoulder to it. Mm. On the treble side, it's a little bit flatter. It's a little more taken in. So if you're playing leads, it's super comfortable. The radius is really special too. It's not a compound radius, it's an asymmetrical radius. So on the bass side of the fretboard, 
It's a little more curved, a little flatter on the treble side. So when you're playing leads and bending, it's a little more friendly and forgiving to your fingers. Right. No fret out. Yeah, no fret out. Um, really comfortable. It rings out nice and cleanly all the way up the neck. Really comfortable. I love this shape a lot. How yeah. You, how do you feel? I love it as well. Yeah, we've been playing it for you know quite a while now, and it's really become a, a feeling of like something I'm used to very quickly for sure. Yeah. The other thing is the neck joint as well. If you want to flip it around there real quick, that's a very smooth kind of like beautifully curved neck joint between the neck and sort of like the heel of the body. This is a set neck construction, you know, which is really unique as well. When he was showing that off to us in his workshop. It was sort of like a dovetail neck joint, but he called it a compression dovetail. There was mm. a really unique way of mounting the neck in there that's very stable and really prevents it from moving or running into any kind of tail rise or anything along those lines. Yeah, I think the most important thing for me when playing a brand new guitar I've never seen before is like, how does this neck shape feel when I'm sitting down versus standing up? It's a great point. Sometimes you're like, oh, this is like a really thin neck, but if I'm standing up and it's like at my waist level, I'm, right. I'm straining really hard. Yeah. And then if it's too big, you're just like, it's cumbersome and you can't get it. You don't know yep. where you're sitting. Right. So sitting or standing, I think the A-type nails being a really ergonomically friendly guitar. Yeah, it plays really well. Mm -hmm. So another design element that I wanted to point out is actually the way that the strings are arranged, how they feed through the nut into the tuning machines. A really interesting sort of design for this style of headstock is there actually isn't any angle. It's a perfectly straight uh, geometry between the tuning peg and the nut and then on down to the tailpiece, which really assists in the tuning stability when using the vibrato tailpiece or even bending or, you know, playing heavily on it, you know? Yeah, you could dive on that thing. It's been staying in tune. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's yeah. one of the, the, like, strongest features of this instrument, for sure. Yeah. So we can start talking about some of the aesthetic features of the instrument at this point. As you can see, it's a very unique kind of design and aesthetic uh, blend of different influences. Um, one of them being hot rotting culture and things along those lines. As you can see, the pickup covers and then also the back plate, if you want to flip it around real quick, have this engine turned look to them, which was a design element that I believe started in watchmaking to kind of give it that really unique look. And it's something that you see oftentimes on hot rods and interiors and things like that. On the front with the tailpiece, you also have this kind of cool touch of the stamped Powers Electric, which gives it that cool retro, it's like retro turn of the industrial century look, industrial kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. yeah. And going from there, we'll talk about these knobs and switch tips real quick. These are from resin that kind of emulate, Andy was talking about glassing a surfboard. Yep. And so when you're, when you're finishing a surfboard, there's, the material starts to drip off and accumulate on the floor, and it starts to layer itself in all the different colors, which is actually also like the Fordite right. of like the 40s and 50s when they were still hand spraying cars, the overspray from the paint and the automobile factories would accumulate and people would start to chip it off. Right. They actually, start, people started to make jewelry out of it. You could find yeah, it on like and shifters, et Etsy like and that. stuff like that. Now, yeah, it's super rare stuff because obviously you don't hand spray cars anymore. Right, yeah. God knows what that stuff was made of. But each of these, uh, the finishes matches the resin. So these right. are the cool colored resin and then there's also warm yep. colors for like all the reds and oranges and yellows that the yes. factory is doing. It's a nice finishing touch. And the pick guard for each is specially designed. You either get this beautiful white pearloid or a fire stripe guard. I believe all of them have this ebony pickup surround, which is I another so, yeah. really nice touch. Mm -hmm. If you maybe want to lower it down, we can talk about the rosewood fingerboard and headstock veneer. As you can see, it has this custom pearl inlay on it, which is very nice. One of my favorite touches. Matching stamps. Yep, that stamped headstock cover, truss rod cover rather. I think that's a really cool touch, nice look to it. Yeah, you for know? sure. Very understated. And the serial for these, you'll all find stamped on the back plate. Yep, super cool. Yeah. So the methods of construction being applied to these instruments mean that there's a really intensive amount of handwork that's being done to craft them, which then yields a very limited number of instruments being completed. So we were very lucky as we were included in a limited group of eight dealerships that are launching this brand. Um, we're very excited to have them here. And as part of the launch, we were included in a dealer event where we actually went out to San Diego to see the workshop where these are being yeah, built that's right. and learned some of the inspirations behind the design, some of obviously the functional elements of the guitar. And it was a really great time. And this was the first, that was the first time we saw this specific guitar, right? They literally gave us all our cases with like the little music tag on it. They're yep. like, go open it. Culture. 
Okay. Yeah. Carol's back with a super secret warehouse alert. You're gonna have to wait a couple of weeks after this. To see it. Very first wow. Check that color out. I'm not sure. They're all pretty good. They're not all gonna lie. So literally when you make your glass in a board. Yep. Here's yours. Yeah. The totally. turquoise one. Yeah. 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 And the trip was great. He took us into our his workshop. We saw a lot of the ways that the design was done over the course of the prototyping, the current way that they're actually building these guitars and the pickups and things along those lines. Then even just some of the like culture in North County, San Diego, you know, surf culture, skate culture, hot yeah, rods, I think, car shows. I think it was really important and inspiring for us yeah. to see that stuff in its element. It's like like anything musical, like I said before, when I talk about our backgrounds, like right. you're the product of where you're at. So like you grew up in like the California sun. Right. You want these beautiful, vibrant colors on your instruments. You want these like engine turns, metal Components. aesthetics on there. Yeah. yeah, it's all um, it all comes together really well. It's one whole, complete package. Absolutely. I think Andy really knocked it out of the park in making this a guitar that's something new to the market that a lot of people are going to find useful. Absolutely, and we look forward to the future iterations of this, as I'm sure we'll be seeing. Oh yeah. All right, so let's start to close this out. But before we go, I want to talk about who this guitar might be perfect for. I think if you're a session player, you definitely want this guitar. If you're, yeah. if you're a country player, all that clarity, you definitely want this guitar. If you are a heavier alternative rock band and you grab one with the partial Faraday pickups, it's definitely for you because those are grittier. If you're in Cannibal Corpse, it's probably not for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you're looking for something new and refreshing that's going to bring a lot more nuances out of your playing, right. I think the A-Type is a guitar for you. I think it's like hearing a, like a really good stereo system for the first time, right? and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe what I was missing yeah. out of like my tone. Yep. This guitar might do it for you. So give it a try. Why don't you tell the people where they could find this guitar? They can find this guitar on themusiczoo.com. At the time of filming, as I had mentioned earlier, it is a very limited distribution, so we only have a handful of them available. If you'd like to try one out, definitely act quick. Give us a call if you have any questions. We know quite a bit about these, as you can tell. Leave a comment about what you think, but be nice. <laughs>